No, we want gods, mother- Universe bus instant transmit Akajito! The original Dragon Ball is where Goku achieves all of the foundations of his character, both conceptually and as a martial artist. Firstly, learning the basics from Grandpa Gohan, more like life lessons, and how to defend himself. The man who is fully responsible for nurturing Goku into a wonderful earthling, and throwing him off a cliff to bump his head, suppressing the naughty, ferocious Saiyan nature kicking in. Spoiler alert, he turns into an Uzaru and stomps Grandpa Gohan to death. As a kid, Goku is fully recognised with a power pole and flying Nimbus, with a tail if it wasn't already ripped off. But the most popular attack in Dragon Ball history, the Kamehameha, is taught to Goku by Master Roshi, where Goku learns it in record time and it would become his go-to finishing move. Master Roshi would take Goku and Krillin under his wing and advance them in both body and mind when it comes to being a martial artist. Roshi was the original, but Goku also learned from many other masters in the original Dragon Ball. Korin, Kami, Mr. Popo, way before the days of King Kai where he learned the Kaioken and Spirit Bomb, and long before the days training with Whis. After Goku defeated King Piccolo in the original Dragon Ball series, he made his way to Kami's lookout to receive training from Mr. Popo, which in this video we are going to really look at in slightly more depth to understand the teachings of Mr. Popo and why the principles behind his training is what actually are the foundation and groundwork for what we know as Ultra Instinct today. But from what I personally saw in Dragon Ball Super and Ultra Instinct is that many basic principles of training such as focus, precision, don't think, feel, all of those basic martial arts principles were shown in episodes where Whis is trying to basically make Goku and Vegeta suck eggs by teaching them things that they already should know. Especially Goku, who started all of his meditation, focus and battle precision early on in his younger days, with tons of mentors. Now in Super, they act like it's a new concept when it's really not. It's just repackaged to tell a story. Somewhere along the lines, all of this powering up and rage boost bullshit kind of overshadowed the fundamental martial arts teachings of Dragon Ball. So now we are going to go back to the lookout where Mr. Popo trained Goku, and let's see what resemblances we have to modern day Dragon Ball Super training sequences. The concept behind Ultra Instinct in a nutshell is the fight of being able to dodge attack without thinking. Now if we take that notion and what it stands for, when we first see Goku vs Mr. Popo, Goku could not land a hit, and even when he did, it didn't do anything. It was not that just Mr. Popo was stronger or faster just because of he moves fast. There was something else going on, something down to the roots that Ultra Instinct seems to milk. And what's interesting, Goku does not appear the calm collected Goku we all have grown to know. He seemed a bit, well, agitated, and also arrogant somewhat. Furthermore, Mr. Popo felt that Goku was underestimating his opponent too. Now let's not underestimate Mr. Popo here, because him being a veteran, he is able to dodge well, take hits, and swallow Goku's Kamehameha. He knows his stuff. And if we can be real here for a moment, when you look at Mr. Popo, 99% of the time, it looks like nothing can bother him. This guy looks like he has what it takes to get that state of mind. He passively does this shit, every single day. But the big factor here is in the training where Mr. Popo wears the blindfold against Goku to teach Goku about feel. And Mr. Popo could dodge, looking almost as good as how we've seen dodging recently in Dragon Ball Super with the same principle. And fundamentally, this training was prepping Goku to use his senses to feel energy rather than use his eyes, which turns out to be a very important tool for fighters in the Dragon Ball series in and out of combat. And Goku demonstrated this training against Tien in the upcoming tournament when he was able to name every move of Tien whilst in his multi-forms without even seeing them. Because Tien likes to bring out the best in his opponent and is a goddamn role model. And if we think about it, this idea behind the performance and that of Ultra Instinct we see in the Tournament of Power is not too far apart from each other. In fact, both are Goku feeling rather than thinking. And I think, no, I feel that the Ultra Instinct is kind of a nod in a way at the old martial arts principles of Dragon Ball that were dramatically ditched as time moved on with all of the scouters' battle powers and transformations. People ate that up and it stuck. Both Mr. Popo's training and Ultra Instinct are both states of mind. Perhaps Ultra Instinct is a deeper state of mind than the foundation of what Mr. Popo taught, but like I said, both ideas feel the same. Old ideas of Mr. Popo's training are just flared up with some godly aura and titles. To me, it feels like Ultra Instinct and what it's supposed to be is something that Goku should already be utilizing in every single fight since the day of training with Mr. Popo. 
Goku is supposed to be this great martial artist where his only goal in life is to keep best in himself. And then we have to ask ourselves, has he really been best in himself as a martial artist through his practice? Or did Goku just ditch all of that and go down the path of powerful rage and transformations? Because honestly, I feel a martial artist who practices every day, it should be a given that the moment they wake up, perform their morning martial arts ritual, meditations, focus, basic principles, because true martial artists never ditch the basics. And yet, it seems Goku getting Ultra Instinct is basically a new thing, like a slap in the face to Goku's entire martial arts history and dedication by saying, Hey Goku, what the hell have you been doing for the last 30 years? You should be like this all of the time. And the whole build-up of Ultra Instinct, being able to attack and defend whilst letting your body move and feel by itself, is something that should be common practice for someone like Goku as a martial artist. And he's had tons of mentors, including the great Master Roshi, who we all know is all about the Ultra Instinct in the manga. So yes, somewhere along the lines, I feel personally that the concept of transformations and power levels truly disregarded martial arts philosophies in Dragon Ball until now, at the end of Dragon Ball Super, we truly see those philosophies are still probably the most important thing to a fighter. At times, they did try and maintain some old martial arts ideas when Goku was a Super Saiyan, but there just wasn't enough of them. And you could really tell martial arts wasn't the cool thing anymore. It was all about the big power-ups and next transformations in Dragon Ball Z. And that's why I believe Mr. Popo was the original Ultra Instinct user. Not in terms of power, obviously, but in terms of what it's meant to be. Until it was just repackaged and added to the story like it's some new thing when really Goku and Mr. Popo was doing that stuff like over 30 years ago. They call it State of the Gods? Well, so be it. This guy lives on the lookout and has been working alongside God for years. That's right, my friends. Mr. Popo is Ultra Instinct. I don't think even Jiren would want to mess with this guy. Episode 129 of the original Dragon Ball, in which a young Goku travels to the past and battles Master Mutaito. This is where Goku learned much about the basics of Ki, where Master Roshi and Master Shen also learned it, to which that later led to Roshi developing the Kamehameha. Pretty cool background. If it wasn't for Master Mutaito, then the Kamehameha may have never been formed. The fact that he was the one who trained Master Roshi led to so many positive outcomes in the Dragon Ball world, including the rise of Goku. In terms of his power, he was actually able to best Goku, showing he was stronger. And this was during the time Goku trained with Mr. Popo. Scaling gets a bit messy here in the anime and manga. We could assume Kid Goku and young King Piccolo were on equal footing, but he had grown stronger since then according to Mr. Popo. When Goku traveled time and battled Master Mutaito, he beat Goku with a single move. Even Goku was shocked, but that's in the anime. In the manga, Demon King Piccolo was stronger than Master clearly, so it makes more sense for Master Mutaito to be below the guide power level of 260 for Demon King Piccolo. But let me know who was stronger, Master Mutaito or Master Roshi in Dragon Ball Z. When he trained Goku, he was telling Goku some very familiar words. Clear your mind of all unnecessary thoughts. Focus. The rest is up to you. Sounds like Whis and the writers are recycling some old concepts for Ultra Instinct. Other than that, Master Mutaito is the original Ultra Instinct hero. I'm just kidding. But yeah, always funny to see old concepts repackaged. Yeah.